right, what's up everyone? Swinging Bull here with PB Alerts and welcome to the stream. In today's stream, we're going to be going over um, a couple banking stocks. So it'd be a little bit of a preview. Um, specifically, we're going to be going over JP Morgan Chase, which is ticker symbol JPM. And then we're going to take a look at Wells Fargo, which is ticker WFC. Um, they both report tomorrow morning before the bell. Um, so the regular session uh, bell actually just rang for the closing for today. Um, so let's go ahead and just dive right in here. Um, I want to talk about, uh, let's talk about Wells Fargo first. So we'll just kind of look at some of their fundamentals real quick. Um, got a PE ratio forecast of 11.85. Uh, got a nice positive EPS uh, trailing 12 months of $4.83. Um, nice dividend too, a little cherry on top, uh, dividend yield 2.47%, um, so a bit extra there. So PE ratio, EPS looks pretty good and uh, pretty solid with a dividend payout for Wells Fargo. Currently trading, uh, the close today was 56.65. Um, just looking at some of their uh, financials, let's look at net income first. Their net income um, did kind of peak a little bit Q3 or Q2, Q3 of last year. Um, and then when they reported data for Q4 of last year, kind of came down a little bit, but still very much positive net income, um, well into the billion dollar range for each quarter. And the year over year numbers are still nice and green. So um, pretty good fun, uh, financials and fun, uh, basically fundamentals on Wells Fargo. Looking at their uh, balance sheet, um, debt to asset ratio, about 90%. So a little bit on the high side, uh, but it's still below 100%. Um, so they're not over leveraged or anything like that. So financial is looking good on, on Wells Fargo. Um, let's just take a quick look at some other info here. So they report tomorrow morning at 6.55 a.m. Eastern before the bell, of course. Um, EPS uh, forecasts $1.09 and revenue forecast $20.17 um, just taking a quick look at this graph here on earnings whispers. Um, I like to look at this graph. It shows the anchor VWAP. Um, we all know what VWAP is. We use it int intraday for intraday trading. Um, the, the anchored VWAP um, we can use outside of intraday charts. So anchored VWAP on Wells Fargo looks like it's probably around 53 bucks. So if, if we do get a negative reaction um, to Wells Fargo's earnings for whatever reason, um, look for maybe around 53 bucks to hold. Um, looking at the expected move for Wells Fargo for the end of the day uh, tomorrow, uh, looks like it's about two dollars and 18 cents. So it's a little, little over a two dollar move. It's what it's it, um, uh, what we're expecting for the move on the um, earnings reaction, and um, basically by the close of the, tomorrow. So not really a big expected move. Only a couple dollars. So that, that kind of um, tells me some. I like to do inverse iron condors on um, earnings. And I usually look for stocks that are going to have a, um, a, a big move. Wells Fargo, you know, not really a big expected move. So I probably, you know, would pass on that if it was me. Um, let's take a look at uh, previous earnings from uh, Wells Fargo and how the stock reacted to those earnings one day after the announcement. Um, First, we got uh, moderate buy on 19 analysts, so good amount of analysts there, moderate buy. Looking at EPS um, for like the past nine or 10 previous earnings, they always do a really good job beating EPS. Um, looks like last time it, it came right in line, um, but you know, got a couple little glitches here. O October 14th, July 15th, 2022, they, they had trouble beating there. Um, but overall, they usually do a pretty good job beating EPS forecast. So that's that's good for them. And as far as what the stock price was one day after earnings uh, for previous earnings, the most recent one, um, January 11th, when they reported um, obviously Q4 of 2023, um, they, they were down 3.35% the next day. Um, October uh, 13th, they, they were green the next day by 3%. So kind of a little flip-flop back and forth between green and red as far as the, the um, previous two earnings. Um, so a little bit of a mixed bag. The two times before that, they were basically flat the next day. So, you know, th th this just tells me that this stock really doesn't make big moves um, for earnings announcements. 
um, you know, got, got a little bit of a, a move on, on the um, previous two ones, but, you know, not really a big mover, Wells Fargo is, um, as far as reactions to earnings. So as far as um, putting together a trade on this, um, I, I probably would skip it. Um, so with that said, let's look at um, JP Morgan, because I know this one is going to have a bigger move. It's a bigger price stock, huh? close at 195.24 today. So let's take a look at their um, some of their uh, fundamentals here. PE ratio forecast uh, 12.26. So that's nice and positive there. EPS trailing 12 months 16.23. So that's that's great. Um, they also pay a dividend yield 2.367 uh, 36 percent. So Wells Fargo and J.P. Morgan both both pay you know two to three percent dividend there. Um, so pretty good uh, for J.P. Morgan. Looking at financials, uh, debt to asset 91 percent, kind of in line with with uh, Wells Fargo. They're you know. Uh, competitor obviously income statement kind of the same looking graph as what wells fargo had where q2 q3 you know q2 of last year they they kind of peaked and then kind of slid down but um still very much positive net income um for jp morgan and um year over year numbers q4 um, was red a little bit but but nice and green before that um, but looks kind of similar to what Wells Fargo has going on. Um, let's look at some other data here for JP Morgan. So we have the forecast uh, EPS at $4.18. And we have the forecast revenue at $40.78 billion. Um, anchored VWAP um, looks like it's a little bit above $180. Bucks, so you know, I'd look for that level to hold for sure. If we if we do get a negative reaction to JP Morgan's earnings, look for like just above 180 to hold 185, maybe around there. Um, looking at the expected move for JP Morgan, let's take a look at that. This would be for the close tomorrow. Um, it's almost seven dollars. It's six dollars seventy six cents. And um, that's, this is how I'm finding the expected move. Just go to the option chain on Thinkorswim and go all the way to the right, and, and you'll see in parentheses plus or minus, and then and then a, um, a number. So plus or minus six dollars seventy six cents, basically the cost of the uh, at the money straddle. So that's that's uh, you know we got a little little bit to work with here. So if it was me and I was setting up like an inverse iron condor on this, I, I'll show you how I would set it up. Um, but let's let's look at uh, some more data here. So 23 analysts on JP Morgan, moderate buy. Um, they usually do a pretty good job beating EPS. They didn't beat EPS last go around. Um, they actually missed it by by like 0.31. Um, so they missed it by you know basically 10 percent around there. Um, a little thing that might worry me on JP Morgan, as you can tell, they the forecast is a lot higher than the last one. So they're expecting a huge jump in EPS, and uh, maybe that might be too far reaching. Whereas, um, you know, they definitely could have a higher EPS than the last earnings. Um, but since the forecast is so much higher, if they have trouble meeting that forecast it, it could be looked at negatively even though it was a positive change from the last earnings so that that kind of just kind of not so much a red flag but just kind of sticks out at me at this 417 is a lot higher than this 335 which was the last forecast eps so you know kind of hefty expectations for jp morgan um they, they're going to need a really good eps to beat that forecast and like i said their EPS could come in around four bucks or something, but it could come in below forecast and that may be taken negatively. We'll, we'll just have to wait and see tomorrow morning. Um, as far as what the price of JP Morgan did the one day after earnings, kind of flat the, the time before last um, or the last time. And then the time before that, a little bit green, kind of flat. So it's so not really a big mover either. Um, but, you know, we do got an expected move of, of um, almost seven bucks. So um, one way I would probably set a trade up is um, you could just do it on J on uh, option strat tool here. So I just go to April 12th expiration and th th this would be a trade that I would open up, you know, during the regular trading session, of course. 
Um, so to set up an inverse iron condor, it's basically a debit spread on each side of the price um, would be an inverse iron condor. Traditional iron condor, of course, that's a credit spread on each side and we're collecting credit. Um, but we're, we're, we only whip out the, the regular iron condors if we think a stock is going to be neutral and, and it's not going to really move that much then I, I'd be you know, more than happy to, to do a credit spread on each side of the price and just do a, a regular Condor. Um, but if we're expecting a move of some sort, that's when we want to do the opposite, um, which is instead of having a credit spread on each side of the price, we're going to put a debit spread on each side of the price. And I'll kind of show you how I would build that out. So um, I'll just use tomorrow's expiration because, of course, their earnings is tomorrow morning. So you know, we're either going to get the, the move uh, tomorrow morning or we're not. Right. Um, so we can start off by uh, putting a buy call and a sell call in there. And again, it's going to be a call debit spread on the top. So how we're going to build that out. And, and we already know what the expected move is around seven bucks. Right. Um, so let me just let me just kind of see what it would look like. Um, we do this uh, call debit spread at the top. This would be two dollar fifty cent wide. Let me, let me move this out a little bit more. I just want to see what the 205 looks like first. Um, 210. And then what I'm going to do um, now that we got to get both um, debit spreads in there. So that's the call side first. But let me let me get the put side in there. So buy put, sell put. And um, let me move this to so, um, 185 and then maybe 180. Um, yeah, so this is... Uh, you know the, the risk reward on this is, is looking pretty pretty dang good if you ask me now this is set up um where we would be expecting basically like a ten dollar move which is a little bit above the expected move um however we we have seen a lot of stocks lately that that have been blasting through their expected move so um on a trade like this basically the the call debit spread at the top we'd be selling the the 210 call Okay, and then we'd be buying the 205 call, and that forms the call debit spread on, on above the price, current price 195.20, you know, right here. So um, that's the call debit spread on the top. The put debit spread on the bottom, we'd be buying the 185 put and selling the 180 put to form the put debit spread on the other side of the price. And what this trade would cost us would, would be um, $59.50, basically 60 bucks. So basically, risking sixty dollars um to make 440 bucks okay so that risk reward is is is, is very awesome got a chance of profit here i'm um, kind of take that with a grain of salt um because we do have a, a catalyst with earnings and stuff like that so um this would be a, a great risk reward um since the risk reward is so fantastic and what we're um the the inverse iron condor is set up basically um, for a ten dollar move, we know the expected move is around seven bucks. So now I want to kind of bring the spreads in to the price a little bit uh, because you know maybe asking for a ten dollar move might be a bit much, maybe asking for too much. So we can kind of just move them in one strike at a time and just kind of see what this is paying. Um, so I move the call side in one strike, move the put side in one strike. Now it's more like. Um, maybe like a $7.50 move uh, or seven or $8 move is kind of what we're looking for here. Risk reward still, still pretty good. Um, max loss is about 110 bucks. Um, so you're risking 110 um, to make uh, almost $390. So um, that's the, uh, the max profit. So, you know, the, do, do the math on that. So you take three, basically 390 would be the, the max profit divided by your risk, just 110. Um, so, you know, that's a 350% return on your money if, if, this, if this trade plays out. So excellent risk reward still. Um, if you wanted to have a better chance of the play working out, well, you just move your move your debit spreads in again another strike which which i'll show you right now we can move this into a 190 185 move this to 200 and 205 um and actually this is probably the trade that i would take personally um so it, it, it you know th this is a five wide inverse iron condor so 
the total value of it is five hundred dollars and that's why if you take the max profit and add it to the max loss that that gets you five hundred dollars right for each one that you're going to do um you know it's of course it's earnings so kind of more like a earnings lotto because of course we know it could go either way based on guidance from the ceo and stuff like that um, but even this trade here you, you're risking 196 to make 304 um so 304 divided by 196 um still 155 percent return on your money um so that's fantastic so you know how this would work is um basically and let me go to the graph here and kind of show everyone um the nice visual um so on this i basically am looking for jp morgan um to be below 188 or above uh basically 202 okay and and that's all, just about a seven dollar move okay and the expected move is seven dollars so you know that's that's pretty good there so you can see your break even here so what i like about the inverse iron condors is i'm not really biased to one direction um you know i don't care if, if it goes to the moon and i don't care if it burns to the ground because you can see from my graph here i i make um money either way okay now i'm not saying this is a risk-free trade because there's always risk with trading and and the risk on this particular trade is this red tent here okay so if we don't get the move that we're looking for in pre-market which is um either a negative reaction and, and jp morgan falls below 188 um, or a positive reaction jp morgan um gets above 202 basically if neither one of those happen and for whatever reason it's flat by the time you know tomorrow the opening bell tomorrow of course their earnings is at uh was their earnings was at uh, 6 55 a.m yeah so by opening bell you know if i don't have the move that i'm looking for um i this will this will actually still be worth something and i can actually go ahead and sell it um and th there's no way i would ever take the full 196 max loss and i, I can show you on the table here so you, you can see uh, here's april 12th um got the date up top here right so 9 30 a.m eastern you can see on this um table here that if if wells fargo d does not make um a move then you know i and even what, what if it just makes a couple dollar move or something but it's still inside my red tent you can see that it's still going to be worth something and instead of taking a 196 loss i can go ahead and sell it and um you know maybe maybe the loss i take is only half of that you know maybe it's only a hundred dollar loss so in, in theory if you manage the the trade correctly you know you, you're basically going to be risking around 100 bucks to make 300 so still a fantastic trade but if we get the move we're looking for which is on the graph here um just needed above 202 or below 188 then as you can see you know we, we can wake up tomorrow morning um with, with some really really decent profit on the table and again uh, more of a, a neutral trade as far as i don't care if the price goes up you know, or 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 it burns down you know i'm going to make money on both sides with this trade but i just don't want the price to stay inside my red my red tent so if i wake up you know wake up tomorrow morning we'll, we'll see what the earnings data brings in and then after the opening bell you know maybe i'll give it an hour or two um, but if it's still hanging out in my red tent, then I'm just going to close out the trade. And again, it, it'll be less of a loss than what the max loss is showing. Because this max loss would be if you took it to the end of the day tomorrow, 4 p.m. Eastern, Friday. You know, if you took it to 4 p.m. on Friday and it was still in this red tent, then yes, you would take a 196 loss. But I, I, I don't just open up trades and leave them unattended like this, okay? So my point being is, we got a fantastic risk reward here if jp morgan does make the move i'm only looking for like a um a seven dollar move then boom we wake up tomorrow morning with a nice gift um to close out the week a nice profitable trade to close out the week okay and um you know so so that i, I really like doing these types of trades because again you know i'm not biased like you okay you know it, make it options you know if you're going to buy a call of course we need the price to go up right and same thing on the put side and, and you're kind of limited to one direction movement but with this trade 
like I say, I don't care if it goes up or down. I just don't want it falling in the middle of my red tent tomorrow. And, and if it's still in the red tent um, tomorrow after the opening bell rings, maybe give it a little bit, uh, maybe an hour, then I'll just close out the trade and, and I'll take my 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 loss, which which won't be nearly as, as much as this 196 that's showing. So just wanted to give everyone kind of example of the type of trade that I would set up on uh, JP Morgan uh, earnings. And um, again, obviously we would open the trade um, today because they re they report tomorrow morning before the bell. So I, you know, this is a trade I would open um, before the close of the day today. All right. Um, so I hope uh, that was um, informative to everyone, me explaining that. Um, so we went over a trade idea, went over some um, fundamentals and financials on, on JP Morgan and Wells Fargo. Um, I, I think JP Morgan is the play, not so much Wells Fargo, um, but we'll see what happens tomorrow morning. Um, just kind of looking at the heat map here. And the last I checked, I believe financial or I'm sorry, IT was leading the pack. Yeah. So this this kind of um, sector information just kind of screams risk on um, to me. So um, financials was was down today. They, they were at the bottom. Um, but then you got consumer stables down here and healthcare, utilities and energy. You know, you got all the safe, the safe haven stocks were red. And then you got all the the risk stocks um, that were green, especially if you see information technology at the top and consumer discretionary at the top of, of the sector rankings. Um, it's safe to say that, you know, it's we're in today was a risk on um, type of day. And anytime it's risk on, um, you can easily trade uh, tech stocks to the upside and consumer discretionary stocks to the upside. Um, if you want to play the downside, then um, you, you could you could short the um, the safe haven stocks because anytime it's a risk on environment, money is going to move out of the safe haven sectors and into the riskier sectors and vice versa. You know, when we have a, a red day on SPY and things are selling off, um, a lot of times you, you'll see IT and consumer discretionary at the bottom and then you'll see consumer staples and healthcare, utilities, energy at the top. Well, and so that's just, just a good like bird's eye view to kind of get an idea of what kind of price action are we seeing today? Is it a risk on um, environment or are we in a risk off environment? Um, and you can check this information throughout the day and it can definitely help assist, um, assist you as far as what direction we should be trading and what type of trade should we be doing? Because of course we can trade any direction, um, but you know, it, it helps to know this information because you know, on a day like today, I'd be going long on, on tech and consumer discretionary, consumer uh, communication services. I'd be going long there. And then if I wanted to, to short anything with some puts or some call credit spreads, I do a lot of spreads, um, you know, I'd be shorting the stuff at the bottom. Um, so just kind of um, little um, tips and little um, th um, pockets of info for everyone that maybe help your trading out. Um, so we went over how to find expected move on Thinkorswim. Went over two of the, the bigger banks um, that have earnings tomorrow morning. Went over a trade that, that I would do on JP Morgan for, for their earnings to kind of give people um, an idea of, of maybe something you guys might want to try on, on um, some other earnings. And um, the last thing I kind of wanted to go over was um, some of the profits our, our members in our Discord group have been posting lately. Uh, let me just kind of pull this screen over real quick and okay, cool. Yeah. So this, uh, we had a lot of members posting profit recently. Um, got big frosty made a hundred percent on that trade. Mr. SLP nice gain for today. Uh, big frosty again. Okay. He took one of my, one of my alerts and I uh, got 140% on that one. Um, and we, we were going long the market earlier today with the members and, and, uh, paid pretty nice. Um, here, here's another member here. This was just a one day return today, um, up over 1300 bucks. So I was real happy to see that. I always like seeing the members making money because that's what we're here for make money. And, uh, we treat this as a business, you know, we're, we're yes, it's fun and, and we can have fun and socializing and stuff, but you know, and at the end of the day, this is a business and we have to treat it that way. Okay. 
Um, here's Pookie here, uh, made over 600 today. Zach's, Zach's uh, lizard crushed it today. He, he was all, he was on, on top of everything and getting some decent returns, uh, deals for days. Um, this was, this was yesterday. He, he, he made quite a few thousands. He made thousands of dollars. This was on one account. He made over 2,200 and then another 1.8 K on thinkorswim. So grats, uh, deals for days for decent, solid day yesterday um here's another member this was yesterday we, we were playing spy uh, made over a thousand there so i mean you, you guys just see i mean we're, we're over here making some money we're having fun while we're doing it um just a little, the left toolbar on our discord got tons of education here for for any new members got an advanced section i, I do a lot of wheel strategy and multi-leg alerts in this section um there, there's me right here in the stream um and then uh, we actually have a, a, a just launched a new coaches corner. So th this is where all the trades from the coaches go. And um, we, we have a day trading coach. His name's Ethan. Does fantastic. He live trades every single market open. Um, and, and members are making a, a killing with him. We got the swing trading coach, which is uh, Mr. SLP. Um, his name's Lee. And he, anyone who wants to just swing trade equity you know, come, come join his, his coach's corner and you can trade with him. Um, I, I do more like protective passive strategy, which, um, just to kind of dummy it down, it's basically long stock and short calls. Okay. Um, so I do a lot of that kind of trading and, um, I, I enjoy it that over the last several years, that's definitely like the strategy that that's been the most consistent and profitable for me. And, you know, I, I don't really have time every day to be glued to my screen for, for seven hours or, or whatever, you know, um, you know, when I'm long stock and selling calls, um, I, I don't really have to manage it as, as often. And um, usually I, I, I do that for weekly income or monthly income. So that's kind of my coach's corner. And, um, and then we have a, a technical analysis coach. If you're a technical trader, um, this, this is Bitcoin J. He goes by J and, um, he does fantastic, probably one of the best technical analysis um, traders I've ever met. And he's got his own his own corner. So there's there's four coaches total. And then uh, we have a ton of day trades every day. And we live stream every day. Take a sip of water. Um, so we have a lot of fun. But um, that'll probably wrap up the stream for today. I just wanted to touch on JP Morgan and what kind of trade that I would do on that for the earnings. And we talked about Wells Fargo. Um, but yeah, if y'all are interested in uh, coming to hang out with us and chat with us in, in our Discord group, the link in the description. You can join for free. And uh, we look forward to seeing you soon. Cheers, everybody.